Some days I'd love to just go to 24-7 sports and look up past recruiting classes and see what kids panned out and what kids flamed out. And after I was looking at former Alabama recruiting classes, I stumbled upon the feature where you can see a school's all-time best commits, and I saw a kid named Cyrus Quandro is the number one recruit in Bama football history. I vaguely remember him in college, but I haven't heard much about him in the NFL, so I wondered, what happened to him? In today's video, we'll be talking about the kid's rise, his time at Alabama, and his troubled NFL career that never lived up to all the hype he had. But first, I put full-time work hours into this YouTube channel, so I would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe, smash that like button, drop a comment, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload of mine. I love what I do, and your guys' support helps me make and put out more content. So without further ado, let's get started with what happened to Cyrus Quanjo. Cyrus was the prototypical offensive lineman when he arrived at Alabama, but we need to go across the country to Maryland to truly understand his full story. Him and his brother both grew up as man children and as sons of a former professional soccer player, so football wasn't actually their original sport. At 6 foot 7, it's not like Cyrus was ever going to actually have a choice of what sport to play though. Football was 100% going to be his future, if not basketball, even if he had no idea how to play either of them. His brother was a year older and was just as talented as Cyrus, but the little brother had more potential. After one year at High Point High School, the brothers transferred to the famous DeMatha Catholic High School in Maryland, and it was there where Cyrus would reach his untapped potential. Ari and Cyrus would become the left and right tackles for the team, and both were top tier recruits. Ari was a four star recruit and would later commit to Alabama, and Cyrus would move to left tackle where he would become a high school superstar. He had more than 60 offers and was the number one offensive lineman in the class of 2011. It was ultimately going to come down to Alabama and Auburn for his talents. He waited all the way up till National Signing Day where he would commit to Auburn. He would later say in an interview that he honestly had no idea which school he was going to go to and that's why he rushed his decision. But he told the crowd that he was going to Auburn so he was going to be playing for the rival school but also against his brother. Except that whole Auburn thing would never actually even happen. Apparently things had gotten really mixed up, Cyrus would have second thoughts and he chose to play with his brother at Alabama because he said he had a sign from God. So three days after signing day, it was announced on Twitter that he was going to be part of Bama's class. This was a massive get for Nick Saban, and he would become the biggest commit in school history. According to 24-7 Sports, Cyrus was the number one offensive lineman, a five-star recruit, and the number two player in the class of 2011 behind Jadavian Clowney. Going into the 2011 season, Cyrus was going to play immediately. He would start the first eight games of the season before disaster struck against Tennessee. In the second half, Cyrus went down with a knee injury that would end his year. To make matters worse, a few weeks prior his brother Ari had torn up both his knees and he was told he was never going to play football again. This was devastating news for the two of them, but they would truly bond even more during the grueling rehab process and both would get back. Because they were warriors, they would battle back and become starters on the line again in 2012. They would help become the anchor of the line that led Alabama all the way to the national championship game against Notre Dame. They killed them, and Cyrus became one of the best linemen in college football. He only allowed three sacks all season, and he was going to have a huge junior year. Going into his third year, he knew he was going to be good, but he decided he was going to stay off social media and not read anything about himself so he could block out all the noise. That is exactly what he did, and he became an Alabama superstar as he helped the team set a school record for scrimmage yards with 5,903 in just one season. And they were on their way to another national title. At least that's what everyone thought. Auburn would end up getting the last laugh for Cyrus as they would return the famous kick six and take the tied spot in the national championship game. Things didn't get better from there as he allowed three sacks in their Sugar Bowl loss to Clemson. He took it personally and vowed to get better. He was named both the first team All-SEC and a first team All-American and he was now ready for the NFL, at least that's what he thought. Except that Sugar Bowl game against Clemson and a poor combine performance dipped his stock all the way to the second round and in retrospect everyone said he should have came back for his senior year. His stock did drop and he was taken in the second round of the 2014 NFL Draft by the Buffalo Bills with the 44th overall pick. He would play sparingly in his rookie year as he only appeared in one game. It was mostly the same as second year but he would catch a break going into his third year in the league. Injuries to the team would allow him to play in some of the first few games, but he'd only make 5 starts in 2016 because of an ankle injury that he would suffer himself. This would be the start of a downward spiral for him, as after the season, he hit an all-time low. He apparently fell down in his home and injured his hip. That required surgery, and he was expected to be back for fall camp, but then he hit another all-time low. According to a police report, Cyrus was seen wandering on the streets when emergency lights came by, and they saw him dart over an electric fence, 
partially closed in a dazed and confused mindset, and he was wandering out a farm field until they finally got a hold of him. He was apparently very cooperative, so there was no charges, but they were very concerned. At first, there were reports that he had asked the cops to shoot him, alluding to the idea that he could be suicidal, but it was later reported that was false. For good measure, he was taken to the Erie County Medical Center, and he was watched over to make sure he was okay. The Bills issued a statement at the time that read, We are aware of the matter involving Cyrus and are carefully monitoring his condition and gathering more information. We do not have all the details, so we won't have any further comment at this time. From there, that was kind of the last straw, as he was released by the Bills, and this was a really tough time for him. After Taylor Decker would go down with an injury for the Lions, Detroit was in desperate need of a right tackle, and after a month on the market, they signed Cyrus. People were saying he could potentially be the starting tackle for the team, but in late August, just a few weeks before the season started, he was released by the team and was once again on the free agent market. Cyrus would get one more chance in the NFL, as he was picked up by the Denver Broncos, but he was released and re-signed a couple times, and never actually got a real chance to play. He did not do anything in 2019, but his football career wasn't over yet, as he would get one more chance. Because of the creation of the XFL, this was going to give him the opportunity to play again. He was drafted in the second round of the XFL draft by the New York Guardians, but because of the league's short shelf life, he didn't get much of a chance to prove himself. As of 2020, he is playing for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League, and he is still trying to make it back to the NFL. Cyrus has been dealt some tough hands, but he is still fighting and proving why he deserves a spot in the league, and I cannot help but give props to someone who fights the way he does. We have told Cyrus' story, but what about his brothers? Ari went on to become a starter for Alabama in 2014, and he did so well that he was named as a second team All-American after the season. He would be taken with the 112th overall pick in the fourth round by the Washington Redskins, and he was now going to get his own NFL story. He would stay there for most of his rookie year, but he was eventually waived. He signed with the Baltimore Ravens practice squad before he was claimed once again by the Redskins for a second time. He would actually get a chance to start in six games at the guard spot in 2017, but just like his brothers, injuries would be the death of him. A surgery would require him to miss the entire 2018 season and basically put an end to his NFL career. Like his brother, he would get another chance though, as he was drafted into the XFL by way of the New York Guardians too, but this time he went in the 10th round. After the XFL died, there really isn't any information about where he is now, but I'll be sure to let you guys know if I ever find anything. The Quanjo brothers are fighters and have done everything they can to make it in the NFL, but the football gods just don't want them to succeed. It's crazy that Cyrus is the number one recruit in Alabama football history, and I wish his career had lived up to the hype he had. I really hope you guys did enjoy today's video, and if you did, please be sure to smash that like button and let me know what you think down in the comment section. Every like, comment, share, and just staying till the end of each video helps all my videos and my channel grow, and I really do appreciate all of it and all of you guys. If you are new, do not forget to subscribe, and also be sure to check out all my other college football what happened to videos. I know I'll be back soon, but until next time, peace.